Hello, ladies, NBs, and gentlemen. Um, if you've been watching the news recently or keeping an eye on the news, you may have noticed that my home city, uh, the city of Chester in the northwest of England, is now banning homelessness. Um, they're going to start fining homeless people, by which I mean people sleeping rough, a thousand pounds. Uh, because we all know homeless people have a thousand pounds knocking about, don't we? Yes, we all know that your average homeless person um, could easily just pay a thousand pound fine. Yes, and they're only really homeless for shit and giggles, not because, you know, they can't afford to fucking live anywhere or anything like that. Um, that was sarcasm, obviously. Um, I've no idea how they expect people to pay this thousand pound fine. I don't even want to know how. There is no way of paying this that isn't ridiculous. Um, let's have a look at the article. Yes, so the, the headline of this article is Chester Roof Sleeping Ban Plan Criticised by Homeless. Homeless people in Chester have criticised plans to use new laws to make rough sleeping an offence in the city centre. So I think that wins a gold medal in the no fucking shit Olympics. Uh, it reads on, Chester West and Chester Council wants to introduce a public space protection order banning sleeping in the streets as well as feeding the birds and unauthorised busking. So not only are the council picking on the homeless here, they want to ban people from feeding birds and busking. Now, not being allowed to feed birds or play your guitar on uh, street corners is probably not as bad as not being allowed to sleep in the street if you don't have anywhere to live. But even so, that's still incredibly miserable, isn't it? Um, it, it just seems that it was trying to take all the joy out of living in Chester, all the culture. I should say with busking, busking in Chester is a big part of the culture of Chester. If you've never been walking through the streets on a nice day, you can hear all sorts of street entertainment. And some of it's good. Don't get the idea that just because these people are uh, buskers that they somehow um, not not good at what they do. A lot of them are really talented. Um, so they're trying to ruin that for everyone, which is a shame. I actually used to busk years ago. This was before I lived in Chester. Uh, I used to just travel in on the bus and busk occasionally. Some days were better than others, but it's, it's, um, it's a good part of the culture of our city. And surprise, surprise, the council seemed to want to ruin it. Um, failure to comply with the order could lead to a fine of up to £1,000. Like we said, that £1,000 is probably going to, if anyone can pay it at all, they're probably going to have to count it out in urine-stained 2p coins. Um, no idea where they think these people are going to get £1,000 from. The council insisted the aim was to safeguard the interests of all. That would be all, except for homeless people, buskers, and people who want to feed birds, apparently. But, you know, those people, fuck them, apparently uh, everyone else is so much more important. Public Space Protection Orders, or PSPOs, were introduced under the Anti-Social Behaviour Crime and Policing Act in 2014. So what's that, what exactly is anti-social about busking or feeding birds? I understand, like, in some places, um, birds can be a, a nuisance, and it... it they don't want to encourage too many of them. But there are certain designated areas, of course, where you can feed birds, surely. Um, government guidance and PSPOs were intended to deal with issues in certain areas that are detrimental to the local community's quality of life by imposing conditions on the use of that area which apply to everyone. Oh, that's good to know that it applies to everyone. So it's not just homeless people who aren't allowed to sleep rough. If you live in a mansion, you're not allowed to do it either. So, you know, everyone's suffering here. Uh, activities to be controlled and restricted by Chester's public space protection order. Rough sleeping. Using so-called legal highs. Drinking alcohol outside licensed premises. Unauthorised busking. Begging, feeding birds, urinating except in public toilets. So, so people can't sleep rough, but they also can't beg. So, what are they going to do? They, they, how are they going to pay this fine if they can't collect a thousand pounds worth of urine stained 2p coins? Ridiculous. Charity Chester Aid to the Homeless runs a homeless shelter providing food, clothing and counselling to homeless people in the city. 
Manager Robert Whittle said homeless provision in the city needed to be increased, but insisted criminalising behaviour, which is the end result of lots of different factors, just isn't the solution. Yes, and Manager Robert Whittle is correct here. Yes, maybe stating the really obvious, but nonetheless, apparently that needs stating because the council are a bunch of complete dickheads. Shelter user Andy has been sleeping rough in Chester City Centre for the last four years. He said the new rules were outrageous. Again, stating the obvious, but correct and apparently needed. They're trying to say sleeping in the city centre is an act of antisocial behaviour. It's not. It's an act of poverty. Yes, again, stating the obvious, but apparently the obvious needs to be stated here. Yes, people aren't just sleeping rough for shits and giggles. They are just sleeping rough to piss off all the people walking around. We sleep in the city centre to stay safe. To tell us we're going to be fined or penalised for staying somewhere safe is wrong in my eyes. And again, Andy is correct here. Um, I, I don't know where they think people are going to sleep if not in the city centre. If they're going to go out into the suburbs. I mean, is, if you're some stuck-up, snooty-tooty um, suburbanite, you know, or shouldn't you actually be opposed to this? Wouldn't you prefer all the homeless people stayed in the city and not came and started sleeping on your suburban doorsteps? So even if you're a complete snob, shouldn't you also be opposed to this for that reason? Um, and, and again, um, yeah, the only other place I could see people sleeping would be out in the rural countryside, you know, where they'd be prey to all kinds of animals and so on. Human rights campaign group Liberty is investigating taking legal action good on them. Legal officer Rosie Brighouse said, begging and sleeping rough are not lifestyle choices or antisocial behaviour. They're usually a result of extreme poverty. Yeah, and Rosie Brighouse is correct here, and she's stating the obvious, but yes, the obvious just seems to need to be stated here because the obvious apparently isn't obvious to the council. Instead of criminalising the city's poorest and most vulnerable, issuing them with a fine they can't possibly afford to pay and pushing them further to the margins, Cheshire West and Chester Council should focus on helping them. Yes. Yes, again, a statement of the obvious, but apparently one that needs to be made. Because that's kind of what the council is supposed to be there for. It's supposed to serve the people, not the other way around. Uh, Cheshire West and Chester Council Head of Play Services Maria Byrne insisted the impetus was to provide support for homeless people. What we want to try and do is make sure everybody rough sleeping is aware of the provision. Hmm. She added that a fine would be a last resort. <laughs> oh, good. It'll be a last resort. Heaven forbid that would be your first resort. <laughs> it's, not, it's not any kind of worthwhile resort. No, no one can pay this. It doesn't matter what you do. Apart from the, uh, the horrible idea of taking money from people who don't have any money in the first place, it's also been practical. Where are you going to get? Where do you think these people are going to get a thousand quid from? Uh, and the council would work with police to look at the whole situation, not just one element. Okay, so you're going to bully everybody. That's wonderful. Taking an intersectional approach to bullying, fantastic. We don't want to push people to crime. We. We need to find ways to make sure we are helping and finding places for them to sleep rather than not on the street. Yes, you need to do that. Get with it. I think it is about preserving the city, safeguarding the interest of all of those who use it and promoting the city as somewhere to live, visit and return. In other words, you want to make it look all nice for the tourists. You don't want tourists coming here and seeing the homelessness problem. You want that all brushed away. Rather than solving it, you want uh, the homelessness problem to be all sort of brushed under the carpet. So these people are still suffering, they're still starving, they're still struggling to find um, ways to make ends meet, but at least no, no, none of the tourists will see them. Along as, as long as all the tourists will still come here and spend money buying fake Roman memorabilia and so on, you're quite happy with that. She said, the active three months consultation, consultation would consider all options. Oh, God. Right, yes, Chester actually has, as far as I'm aware, what the most severe homelessness problem in the UK outside of London. Now, Chester is a very small city, we have to take that into account, but that's still pretty bad. And yes, the council and the powers that be in general need to actually start looking at helping the homeless, not helping themselves, not brushing them under the carpet so tourists will uh, won't notice them. Because any anyone who's been to any major city in the world, you know that there's going to be 
homelessness. When I was in Toronto, of course, yes, there were, were homeless people. Um, you know, it was quite frequent that we that I saw them. Um, and most major cities, London, again, I've been to London. Yes, you see homeless people. It's pretending this these people don't, don't exist is not the answer. We need to actually start helping the homeless, which is hard work. Yes, it's harder work, but it's what needs to be done. That is in the interests of all. Thank you for watching.